Hello and welcome to the part 16 of my 2024 F1 season simulation. If you missed the last part, part 15, that was the Dutch Grand Prix. Make sure to check that one out before watching this video. Um, in Netherlands, we had a very big twist in the championship that I'm not going to spoil just yet. Um, make sure to check that one out if you happen to miss this, uh, this part. Anyways, let's get into the round 16, the Italian Grand Prix, Monza time with Ferrari's home. Yeah, uh, the fastest track on the calendar. In terms of weather, no rain expected. So another another weekend where uh, weather isn't like uh, the most improbable thing ever. Uh, but it seems like we're not getting too much rain this time, in the simulation at least. Um, okay. So let's get into the upgrades then. Uh, we have three big upgrades from, uh, well, upgrade, big upgrades for three teams that uh, is Ferrari, Haas, and uh, no, it's actually Ferrari, Racing Bulls, and Sauber. Haas bring a small update to the car, and the rest of the field bring no updates to their car apart from setup changes, obviously. Um, yeah, with pretty, pretty, uh, low amount of upgrades overall across the board but we have the huge upgrade for ferrari for their home grand prix and technically for sauber as well even though they, uh, their identity this season is, is is pretty pretty uh off i would say anyways let's get into q1 and see if the upgrades change anything in the parking order as we see max for and topping provisionally q1 Ahead of Charles Leclerc in P2, Carlos Sainz in P3, then we have Alonso, Hamilton, Norris, Piastri, Perez, Russell, and Ocon, Hulkenberg up in P11. We have Alvin Stroll, Ricardo, and Sargent, both Williams is making it through so far. As we have provisionally out in Q1, Gasly, Sonoda, Magnussen, Bottas, and Joe. This session was un uninterrupted, but as we can see, there's a lot of, a lot of deviation in the times. Um, yeah, the driver is still learning the track. Uh, not learning the track, they obviously know it. Uh, just uh, learning the track conditions and everything around this. Uh, as Monza, as as easy as it may seem, it's a pretty difficult circuit to get completely right. Uh, one mistake into one turn can cost you two tenths of a second, maybe even more. Just, uh, yeah. Perez lacking behind Max Verstappen by quite a lot, over seven tenths of a second. Uh, Magnussen five tenths, um, five tenths behind Hulkenberg. Yeah. Uh, apart from that, not really to mention. Uh, Ricardo beating beating Sonoda so far uh, once again. Stroll far behind Alonso, but that's uh, to be expected. Yeah. Pretty much nothing really to say. Uh, McLaren's and Mercedes cars. As well as the Aston Martin, technically seem to lack pace uh, compared to Ferraris and Red Bull so far in Q1. But yeah, let's see if there are any changes for the final classification, as we have only one change that is Landon or is getting his lifetime deleted uh, drops from what I believe was P7 or P6 before to P14, but still makes it through, so no, uh, no problem there. It's just an unfortunate, an unfortunate thing for Norris. Uh, yeah, lead lap times are a thing in Monza as well. Um, it's actually one of those circuits I think that suffers from lead lap times quite a bit, as uh, those curbs, especially in sector two, are uh, like likely to get you get your lap time deleted, uh, as the curves are pretty wide. Uh, it, even though there's like gravel and grass just behind the curbs, drivers still use a lot of the curbs anyway. Because it's the uh, faster, faster driving, uh, faster racing line, whatever. Anyways, uh, let's get into Q2 as final uh, final classification. Seth Gasly, Sinoda, Magnussen, Bottas, and Joe are out in Q1. Q2, we have Charles Leclerc topping the session provisionally uh, ahead of Max Verstappen and Carl Sainz and P3. Uh, very close margins there. P4 for George Russell, then it's Norris, Perez, Ocon, PS3, Hamilton, and Nico Hulkenberg somehow making it to. 10th position uh, provisionally in Q3, uh, in P10, just, as a, just ahead of the two Aston Martin cars of Stroll and Alonso, is Ricardo and the, the two Williams cars. Sargent actually ahead of Alban so far. Uh, yeah, this is, this is pretty interesting. Uh, but I would I like to mention especially is uh, 
Alonso being behind Stroll is mostly due to this mistake. It was classified as a classified as a driver, but wasn't a no time one. It was just a nerf to their time, uh, which would essentially mean that only Stroll got to finish his uh, second second fast lap time uh, of the session, pretty much. Uh, other than that, I don't know what really to say. It's just Ferraris versus Max Verstappen for pole position. It looks like with uh, McLaren's how uh, McLaren's Mercedes. We have Ocon there somehow, uh, despite Gasly being knocked out in Q1, and Perez obviously far behind Max, as always. I keep hitting the mic with my my headphones, sorry for, about that. Yeah, let's see if there are any changes for Q2, as we have, uh, I believe, no changes for this one. So this is how things stand in Q2. Stroll, Alonso, Ricardo, Sergeant and Albon out are out in Q2 in Monza. So let's get into Q3 and see who's on pole position. Provisionally on pole position for the Italian Grand Prix is Charles Leclerc, ahead of Max Verstappen and Carl Sainz in P3. We have the two Mercedes cars of Hamilton, ahead of Russell. Then we have Norris, Hulkenberg, Piastri. And the two drivers with no lap time set are Perez and Ocon. That's due to them having a contact, essentially a ruining they're both, uh, qualifying for both of them as both got damage uh, that's irreversible and unfortunately wouldn't allow them to continue uh, with another flying lap. Uh, yeah, McLaren's, McLaren's really, really lacking pace here, even though they're in sixth and eighth. The, the gap to the Ferraris on pole position is is horrendous, uh, honestly. There is a has splitting the McLaren, so you know, just uh how things stand mercedes cars even though they're half a second off fourth and fifth place are uh, de decent results i would say uh charles Leclerc provisional pole position that's very good for the ferrari team uh for the home grand prix the car science up there in p3 as well yeah let's see if there are any changes for the final, final classification as we can see there are no changes so this is how things stand charles Leclerc gets pole position for the italian grand prix so so we see, we saw just how qualifying went. Let's recap the starting grid for the Italian Grand Prix. As we have Charles Leclerc lining up on pole position for the Italian Grand Prix in front of his home fans, uh, well, Ferrari's home fans. Uh, we have Max Verstappen lining up alongside him in P2. Then we have Carl Sainz in P3, Hamilton P4, Rose Russell P5, Lennon Reis P6, Lokavirk P7, Piastri P8, jo uh, Jaco Perez in P9, and Esteban Ocon. Uh, in P10, then we have the two SMRs of Stroll and Alonso in P11 and P12, Ricardo P13, Sergeant P14, Gasly P15, Sonoda P16, Magnussen P17, then it's Alex Albon who dropped three places from his qualifying due to the grid penalty from the Dutch Grand Prix, Sergeant P18, then it's Bottas head of show for the last two spots, uh, last row of the grid locked out by the Sauber team. So yeah, let's see what will the Italian Grand Prix bring us today. As we can see, a Ferrari 1-2 in Monza. Wow. Oh my god. This is this is very, very good for the Ferrari fans overall and just just amazing. Uh I can imagine this would be absolute scenes if this had happened in real life. A Ferrari 1-2 on their home soil with a fastest lap as well and a pole position. Uh yeah. Amazing, Charles Leclerc winning the Italian Grand Prix with the fastest lap ahead of Carl Sainz in P2 and Max Verstappen completing the podium in P3. And we have the two Mercedes cars so far in P4 and P5. No, so far, they just raised results, sorry. Uh, Russell ahead of Hamilton, Perez in P6, Alonso P7, making up five places, very good drive. Uh, the McLaren's lacking pace uh, in the race as well. P8 for PS3, P9 for the race. And Nico Hulkenberg managed to <laughs> get a point, a singular point from this Grand Prix uh, as the Haas uh, managed to keep itself in the top 10 thanks to Hulkenberg's uh, driving skills, I would say. <laughs> uh, Magnussen up there in P14 as well. It looks like it has a very great car around this track. Strolling P11, Ocon P12 and Sargent P13. Sargent beating Alban once again. Very, very... Uh, Promising from the American driver. We have Magnussen P14. I mentioned that P15 for Ricardo. 
uh, even though it's a P15 and dropping two places from a grid spot is the leading racing bulls cars actually. Uh, uh, so I'll explain it later. P16 for Alex Albon. Uh, yeah, very, very unfortunate Grand Prix for Albon. Then it's the two Sauber cars of show ahead of Potas in P17 and P18. Those are the two last finishers uh, of this Grand Prix as we have two DNFs, Gasly and Sinoda, which was caused by a uh, similar contact, just like in qualifying between Perez and Ocon. But here we have had a crash in the race between Gasly and Sinoda, uh, deemed as mostly a racing incident as both drivers were at fault. Uh, both drivers DNF'd due to that crash and it caused a safety car, which shuffled the grid a uh, tiny bit. So, uh, we can take the results with a grain of salt as well uh, in terms of the ultimate pace the cars had on this track. So yeah, those are the race results. Let's see how it affected the World Drivers Championship. After round 16, the Italian Grand Prix, Max Verstappen leads the way on 259 points, 3 victories, 10 podiums, 7 pole positions and 8 fastest laps. Yeah, seems like uh, no one can challenge Max at this point. 200 points for uh, Lonzo in P2, uh, already beating 200 points just uh, just after round 16 uh, last year in 2023. It took him, I think, up until the second last race uh, to beat the 200 point mark. Um, as Alonso finished like fourth in the championship or fifth, I actually don't remember. Anyways, uh, Charles Leclerc in P3, 196 points for victories, four podiums, a pole position for fastest laps. Yep. Getting that victory in Monza makes him jump ahead of Norris in the Trash Championship. So far, uh, talking about Norris, uh, P4 now, 184 points, three victories, five podiums, two poles, and a fastest lap. We have his McLaren teammate Oscar Piastri on 171 points, two victories, five podiums, two poles, and a fastest lap. Then it's George Russell in P6, 146 points, a victory, and six podiums. Then we have Carl Sainz, uh, on 133 points in P7, with a victory, five podiums, and a pole position. Uh, yeah, uh, it's uh, difficult for science to move up the field because realistically, you can, you can jump Russell, but he would need Ferrari to maintain the Monza speed uh, for the rest of the season, which is very, very unlikely uh, in order for science to uh, jump ahead of the McLarens, unless some crazy thing happens. Uh, P8 for, so far for Lewis Hamilton on 122 points, dropping press thanks to finishing ahead of him. Now one point ahead and a podium to his name uh, from the season so far. P9 for Jaco Perez, 121 points. Now Max Verstappen is having already more than a double Perez's points. Uh, just a bit good. I'm not gonna lie. Three podiums for Perez this season so far. P10 for Lance Stroll on 69 points. Still a nice number, but not so nice results uh, recently as last show seemed to forget how to score points. Two podiums to his name so far this season. P11 for Sunoda at 48 points. And it's the two Alpine cars of Gasly and Ocon in P12 and P13, 24 and 23 points respectively. And it's P14 for Alex Albon on 19 points uh, and a podium. Then it's P15 for Ricardo on 14 points. Bottas in P16 on four points, uh, behind him is Sargent on the same amount of points. Uh, then it's Hulkenberg, who scored a point uh, in this race, but unfortunately uh, it's only one point and he would need pretty much two more points to move just one place. Uh, obviously he would move two, but uh, getting one more point wouldn't move him ahead of Sargent, unfortunately. Uh, P19 is show and P20 Magnuson, both drivers I get hit to score points in the season or the simulation, as you would like to call it. Anyways, this is the drive championship. Let's see how the, how the constructors championship changed after uh, Monza. As we have Red Bull leading the way on 380 points. Pre victories, 13 podiums, 7 pole positions and 8 fast slaps. As we have McLaren team on 355 points, five victories, 10 podiums, four pole positions, and two fastest laps. Uh, yeah, their gap to Red Bull increased by quite a bit, but that's mostly due to the track really, really, really not suiting McLaren, unfortunately. But 
uh, it's another team by uh, quite a margin. It was the Ferrari team now in P3, well, still in P3, 329 points, four victories, nine podiums, two pole positions, and a fast, uh, four fastest laps. Uh, I, I I don't know if, if Ferrari can keep this form form if if they can obviously uh, they could challenge the teams up ahead but it's really difficult to say because um, I mean there are tracks which should sue the Ferrari uh, Ferrari car especially the next race Baku uh, should be uh, another another race where Ferrari should be the second fastest team at least. Aston Martin now in P4, um, only one point ahead of Mercedes, well, uh, sorry, 269 points. Three victories, eight podiums, three pole positions, and two fastest laps. We have Mercedes team, one point behind Max and Martin in P5 now, 268 points, a victory, and seven podiums. Yeah, uh, this fight for P4 is like, Aston is the better car, but Mercedes has the better driver lineup. <laughs> But somehow they're fighting <laughs> in the constructors. It's uh, pretty, pretty funny. Uh, anyways, Racing Bulls team, 62 points. Alpine team, P7, 47 points. And Williams, P8, 23 points in the podium. Sauber, P9, 4 points. And P10 is has with 3 now. Thanks to the Hulkenberg's point in, in this race. Yeah, um, no no placement changes. So I didn't, didn't mean, uh, didn't pretty much bother to uh, include that this time. Uh, obviously, if there are position changes, I will add that next to the, next to the amount of points gained. Obviously, I want to save up space, kind of, so that's why I didn't include it this time. This will pretty much be just, uh, just lines. But, uh, just no changes anyway. Anyway, so let's move to the round 17, which is Azerbaijan Grand Prix, which should come out either tomorrow or the day after, depends on whether, <laughs> whenever I decide to upload it, because uh, even though the season, the preseason testing is coming closer every day, I just don't feel like I can uh, have daily uploads and then just have like no content till the barring Grand Prix. I mean, yeah, there would be like a weak gap, but still, I, I don't really like gaps. I, I just want uh, steady content on, my, on this channel so for this season. This is an Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Um, I don't really have anything to say up, apart from that. Uh, the pecking order could be very similar to, to this in Monza. Uh, as the track characteristics are very similar, although uh, Baku is mostly just low speed corners and uh, straight line speed, whilst Monza is straight line speed, but there are also various types of corners, uh, especially in sector two and sector three. As sector one is the, those two chicanes, they're kind of low speed corners technically. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, uh, consider subscribing, liking the video, and commenting down below what you want to see uh, from my content uh, on this channel. And yeah, see you in a day or two, depending on where the Azerbaijan Grand Prix comes out. Uh, so yeah, well, up until next time, see you.